Namaste. So a few days ago in our Daily Sutra video, we mentioned the Ani Sutta. The Ani Sutta is a sutta by the Buddha where he talks about how in the future the monks would uh, deny or ignore his real teaching and they would go for subsidiary or ancillary teachings that really have nothing to do with the essence of the Buddha's teaching. So although I mentioned it, I didn't give the full sutta. It's very short. And I think we should look into it because it has many valuable lessons for those who want to pursue self-realization today. Once upon a time, monks, the Dasarahas had a clay drum called the commander. Each time the commander split, they repaired it by inserting another peg. But there came a time when the clay drum commander's original wooden rim disappeared and only a mass of pegs remained. In the same way, in a future time, there will be monks who don't want to listen when discourses spoken by the realized one, deep, profound, transcendent, dealing with emptiness, are being recited. They won't pay attention or apply their minds to understand them, nor will they think those teachings are worth learning and memorizing. But when discourse is composed by poets, poetry with fancy words and phrases composed by outsiders or spoken by disciples are being recited, they will want to listen. They'll pay attention and apply their minds to understand them and they'll think those teachings are worth learning and memorizing. And that is how the discourses spoken by the realized one, deep, profound, transcendent, dealing with emptiness, will disappear. So you should train like this. When discourses spoken by the realized one, deep, profound, transcendent, dealing with emptiness, are being recited, we will want to listen. We will pay attention and apply our minds to understand them, and we will think those teachings are worth learning and memorizing. That's how you should train. So this is exactly what has happened. The Buddha's real teaching has become covered over by a mishmash of bogus commentaries and added teachings. You know, just like the pegs being used to fix the drum, they have gradually taken over until so-called Buddhism is nothing but these additional works by unrealized people. And so the real essence of the Buddha's teaching, emptiness, has disappeared. Now, let's talk about emptiness. This is very important. Emptiness is identical to Brahman. Just using negative language instead of positive language. Brahman, the way it's used in the Vedas, it seems like a thing. We will realize Brahman. Huh? We will uh, become Brahman or we will identify with Brahman. All these phrases are used in the Vedas and Upanishads. And in the same way, in the Buddha's teaching, one is advised to realize emptiness. So what does it mean to realize emptiness? Well, first of all, it means non-duality. There is no other. There is no object. There is no no anything, no things at all. So in this state, one is not exactly conscious, but only aware. One is aware that one is aware and that one is. I mean, who is aware of the emptiness? There has to be someone there. That someone is the self, with a capital S. Because by the time one reaches that state, 
the empirical self, self with a small s, has disappeared, along with the mind, the world, the ego, thoughts, words, phenomena, <clears throat> time, space, dimension, change, everything that we normally are conscious of is gone. So therefore consciousness itself ceases. And the Buddha mentions this in many suttas dealing with emptiness, that in emptiness, in pure emptiness, there's no more consciousness. Why? Because consciousness requires an object, a seer and a scene, and also the act of seeing. So this is duality, or trinity, actually. Huh? Seer, seen, and the act of seeing itself. They're all part of one thing, and that's called consciousness. So consciousness is our default state in the material world. We're always conscious. Even if we're only conscious of consciousness, as in the state of Turiya, still, that consciousness has an object. So when we reach the point where there are no objects, where all objects are subsumed in the underlying substrate of awareness, or Brahman, then one is only aware of being aware. That's the self. But Buddha calls it emptiness, or Nibbana. Nibbana, the real meaning of the word, is that one has extinguished the individual self. Nibbana is used in the word uh, for like blowing out a candle. Huh? Where did the flame go? We can't say it exists anymore. So then, did it ever exist in the first place? No. The candle flame is simply a combination of circumstances, an aggregate, to use the Buddha's language. An aggregate is not a single thing, but it's a combination of several things that together appear to have an individual existence, like a candle flame. But when those things change, for example, the candle burns down, or a breeze comes up and blows out the flame, or there's no oxygen in, in the lamp or something like that, the vent gets closed, the flame goes out, nibbana, it cools down and disappears. But that's not a thing. That's a phenomenon, which is a combination or aggregate of several different factors. So the same is true of the empirical self, the individual ego. That it is a combination of several factors which come together temporarily for the time being, and then at some point they disappear. And so does the self, so does the ego, a self with a lowercase s. <laughs> the mind, the ego, the body, the senses, consciousness, all these things are temporary because they're part of an aggregate called the body, the human being. So in Buddha's language, these are all empty. Form is emptiness. Emptiness is form. Consider a pot or a cup, let's say a teacup. So the cup is defined in a positive way by its shape and its function to hold a liquid. But it's also defined in a negative way by what it is not. There's a space in the cup 
that holds liquid, and there's a space outside the cup that defines it in a negative way. So similarly, the Buddha is using negative language to describe the self with a capital S. <laughs> the self with a capital S is qualitatively and functionally equal to Brahman, as described in the Vedas and Upanishads. But Buddha's innovation was to use negative language, negative logic. This also exists in the Vedas. It's called neti neti, not this, not this. And it's normally applied to the five koshas or sheaths or the five bodies, as you might want to call them. The food body, anamaya kosha, the energy body, pranamaya kosha, the mental body, manomaya kosha, the intelligence or intention or will body, the vijnana maya kosha, and finally, the consciousness body, the ananda maya kosha. So notice these are all maya. <laughs> they don't really exist. They only exist in a kind of assembly or aggregate, which is temporary. This aggregate is formed in the womb of the mother by many factors coming together. And even before that, it's formed in the mind by desire. So these are the three types of ignorance. If you look at a diagram of Paticca Samuppada, dependent arising, you'll see in the middle a threefold, looks like a yin-yang symbol, except there's three. This symbolizes the threefold ignorance, desire, aversion, and delusion. Desire and aversion are actually two sides of the same coin of desire. I want this, I don't want that. And delusion is simply the idea that I exist as a separate individual, separate from everything else, from every other thing. Huh? But what we don't see is that this so-called individual is actually a complex aggregate of many functions that work together to produce a phenomenon, a phenomenon called a human being. And when those things get out of balance or disconnect or disaggregate themselves, then the human being is finished. It's over. This is death. So, in other words, just like individual existence is only a thought in the mind, in the same way, death is only a thought. It's the thought that Oh, this aggregate has ceased to exist. It has disaggregated. So the question then arises, did it ever exist in the first place? And of course, the Buddha's answer is no. So this is why we should study and learn about and contemplate emptiness, nothingness, no self. You see, when the Buddha says there is no God, there is no soul of the universe, and so on, statements like this, what it means is that there are those things, or at least there are the appearance of those things, but they're not really real in the ultimate sense of eternally existing. So if they're not really real, then we don't want to consider that they exist because that will uh, bring us into maya, that which is not. So you see the Buddha's intelligence, his great breakthrough, was to simply recognize that these things never existed. And of course, this is the platform of Ajatavada, which is the highest level of complete self-realization.
Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum.